Thomas Jefferson might have shagged one of his slaves. Like Twilight fan fiction shag or like elderly white man take advantage of his status sort of relations. Of course I can't prove Abraham Lincoln was a vampire hunter, but you can't prove he weren't. Welcome to A Brief History of the Past. I'm Caelan Burroughs and this is part two of the history of the Presidents of the United States. Hey, too bad the Presidents in the sequel are just as old and pasty as those in the first one. I'm not gonna stand here and listen to this baloney. Now we're starting part two off with the 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Now, since the last video, I have been set straight that he wasn't a vampire hunter. But I know he helped Bill and Ted with their history report, there's no change in my mind about that one. <laughs> Lincoln held office from 1861 to 1865. Tensions were already high between northern and southern states over banning the expansion of slavery at the time. When Lincoln was elected, some southern states used it as an opportunity to adopt an ordinance of secession, starting with South Carolina. Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas would soon follow, declaring themselves a sovereign nation, the Confederate States of America more like the wanker states of America. Lincoln, as well as Buchanan before him, refused to recognize the Confederacy, making secession illegal. Interestingly enough, during Lincoln's inaugural address, he proclaimed that he had no inclination to abolish slavery in the southern states. Huh. Well, they left that little detail out of the history books in primary school, didn't they? Lincoln was president for the entirety of the American Civil War. Over the course of the war, between 600,000 and 750,000 people died, making it the deadliest military conflict in American history. During the war, Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which changed the status of enslaved African Americans from slave to free. All they had to do was escape Confederate control, make it back to the North, and then they were permanently free. You make it sound so easy. That sounded easy. Lincoln also promoted the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, which would abolish slavery entirely. It would be passed during Lincoln's term. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be ratified by the states until December 6, 1865, after his death. On the night of April 14, 1865, just five days after the end of the Civil War, Lincoln was shot and mortally wounded by actor and Confederate spy John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theatre. You know, I've always said that actors are the scum of the earth. Andrew Johnson was Lincoln's vice president and succeeded him as the 17th president serving from 1865 to 1869. Johnson's focus was restoring the seceded states to the Union and not protecting the rights of freed slaves. He would veto legislation that Congress passed to make former slaves into American citizens, but Congress was able to overturn the veto, passing the Civil Rights Act of 1866. I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Can we get an applause break for Congress? Johnson is most known for the Alaska Purchase, where he... Well, he purchased Alaska. That's all there is to it. I guess if I tried to prevent African Americans from being citizens, I'd rather be remembered for buying Alaska from Russia as well. Ulysses S. Grant was the 18th president from 1869 to 1877. Grant led the Union Army in its victory over General Lee and the Confederate Army, ending the American Civil War. While Grant was a reluctant politician, he was unanimously nominated by the Republican Party. While in office, he stabilized the post-war economy, created the Department of Justice, and appointed both African and Jewish Americans in prominent public offices. Well, what did the S stand for? Superman? <laughs> What do you mean it stands for nothing? It was the result of Congressman Thomas Hamer spelling it wrong when he nominated him to West Point. And he just kept it. Fall in, soldiers. Where is Cadet Ulysses S. Grant? Uh, it's just Ulysses Grant. No, it says here Ulysses S. Grant. No, but that's wrong. Uh, Ulysses is actually my middle name. My birth name's Hiram. Hmm. Ulysses S. That spells U.S. Are you hearing a word I'm saying? All right, everyone, we're going to call U.S. over here Uncle Sam to make better use of his initials. But those aren't me initials. Uh, oh, whatever. 
No one's going to hear this outside of West Point anyway. Rutherford B. Hayes was the 19th president, serving from 1877 to 1881. What a B. How many other Rutherford Hayeses were there running around Washington at the time? While Hayes was committed to civil service reform and protecting civil rights, he's most remembered for losing the popular vote to Democrat Samuel Tilden in 1876, but won the electoral college vote after a congressional commission awarded him 20 contested electoral votes. That's why I think the Electoral College is a big waste of time. What? Of course I know what the Electoral College is. It's where you elect to go to college. Hello? I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. James Garfield was the 20th president elected in 1881. Garfield would serve only six and a half months being assassinated by Charles Guiteau on July 2nd, 1881. Garfield didn't die until September 19th. What gives? Huh? He died from infections caused by his doctors over the resulting wound. Okay. Who were his doctors then? They should get at least partial credit for the kill. Chester A. Arthur succeeded Garfield as the 21st president, serving from 1881 to 1885. While Arthur is considered to have a solid performance in office, he did reluctantly sign the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882, which built on the Page Act of 1875. The Act prohibited all immigration of Chinese laborers to the United States, while the Page Act banned Chinese women from immigrating to end the danger of cheap Chinese labor and immoral Chinese women. Oi, see that Chinese woman over there? She is so immoral. Yeah, she is. What's she been doing? Mistreating the elderly? Right, stealing horses? Smoking the opium? No! She been selling the sex! Well, that is just deplorable. For how much? Grover Cleveland was the 22nd president serving from 1885 to 1889. Grover was the first Democrat to be elected in office after the Civil War. He was also the only president to be married in the White House, marrying 21-year-old Francis Folsom in 1886. Oh, young love. How old was he at the time? 49. Mm. 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 I'll just threw up in my mouth for a bit. I'll just, I'll just need a minute. Benjamin Harrison was the 23rd president from 1889 to 1893. Harrison was a colonel in the Union Army during the Civil War. As president, he passed the Sherman Antitrust Act, which protected trade and commerce against unlawful restraints and monopolies. He also signed the Land Revision Act of 1891, creating national forest reserves. He modernized the U.S. Navy, added six Western states to the Union, and was a part-time mall Santa. What? What do you mean that last one's not true? It was a wasted opportunity then. Look at that beard. It's majestic. Grover Cleveland was the 24th president. Hang on. Aren't we already done this chap? A deja vu is usually a glitch in the matrix. It happens when they change something. Cleveland was president again from 1893 to 1897. He was the only president to leave office and then return for a second term four years later. Grover's second term unfortunately was marred by the nation's economic disasters and public perception showed him as one of the least popular presidents at the time. See, that's why he don't come out of retirement. You remember when Jordan came out of his second retirement to play for the Wizards, right? You might say that the magic was gone. <laughs> you get it? You get it? Because the magic because he played for the Wizards. <laughs> William McKinley was the 25th president from 1897 to 1901. His presidency saw economic growth with him passing the Gold Standard Act in 1900, which established gold as the only standard for redeeming paper money. He also promoted a tariff designed to protect manufacturers and factory workers from foreign competition called the Dingley Tariff of 1897. I'm sorry, what what's it called? The Dingley Tariff? Dingley. The Dingley Tariff was authorized by Nelson Dingley Jr. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dingley Jr. <laughs> I can't I can't breathe. I can't, I can't breathe. I would like to apologize uh, to to any descendants of the Dingley family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. The Dingley family. <laughs> 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 
McKinley would also defeat Spain in the Spanish-American War of 1898 for Cuban independence, which would make Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines into U.S. colonies. McKinley would also succeed in the annexation of the Republic of Hawaii in 1898. I mean, I think we can all agree it's the greatest addition to the Union. Alaska can suck it. What do you mean I have to apologize to Alaska? Did I even get the internet? McKinley would die on September 14, 1901 from gangrene resulting from an assassin's bullet. The 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt, would be sworn in and serve two terms until 1909. Roosevelt is the youngest person to ever hold office, being a sprightly 42 when he was sworn in. Woo! 42, eh? Finally, a young rebel to shake things up a bit. Roosevelt's domestic program was called the Square Deal and reflected his major political goals, conservation of natural resources, control of corporations, and protection of consumers. So much for him being a rebel. No wonder it was called the Square Deal. An assassination attempt on Roosevelt's life would fail in 1912, with the assassin's bullet penetrating his chest after passing through a steel eyeglass case and a copy of Roosevelt's 50-page speech. Roosevelt concluded that since he wasn't coughing blood, the bullet hadn't reached his lung. He would decline going immediately to hospital to deliver his 90-minute speech, all while blood was seeping through his shirt. Why is there not an action movie about this man's life? I'm thinking Tom Cruise plays Roosevelt and actually gets shot on set. This I'm the guy. The guy. This is the guy. This is the guy. I'm the guy. This is the guy. <laughs> I'm the guy. You are a guy. I'm a guy. I'm a guy. guy. <laughs> William Taft was the 27th president serving from 1909 to 1913. Taft would go on to serve as Chief Justice from 1921 to 1930, and he would be the only person to ever hold both offices. I believe he also has a record for the finest presidential stash. Just look at that thing. Ah. Which means there's no such record. Well, there should be. Woodrow Wilson was the 28th president serving from 1913 to 1921. Wilson would see the nation through World War I. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Woodrow Wilson, WW, right, was president during World War WW1. There's a conspiracy theory there, I'll just know it. Coming up over and over again, every day, Pepe's mail's getting sent back to me. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia, I look in the mail, with well, this whole box is Pepe Sylvia! When the war first broke, Wilson maintained neutrality between the Allied and Central Powers, but would enter the war in 1917 after the German Empire implemented a policy of unrestricted submarine warfare. Starting off strong and then overreaching, causing inevitable defeat. Classic Germany. Warren Harding was the 29th president, serving from 1921 to 1923, and originated resting face. What? Look at that photo. What would you call it then? While Harding would die of a heart attack before his term was over, his presidency was rocked by a number of scandals that came to light after his death. Harding had appointed a number of friends to federal positions, and while some served admirably, a number used their positions to increase their own personal gains. Ain't that how the entire government's run nowadays? Of course! Calvin Coolidge was Harding's vice president and would succeed him as the 30th president, serving from 1923 to 1929. He gained a reputation as a conservative who believed in small government, a system where the government has minimal involvement in certain areas of public policy or the private sector. He also managed to restore public confidence in the White House after the scandals of the Harding administration. It's said that he said little and had a dry sense of humour. Well, I guess you could say that Calvin was quite cool. Itch. <laughs> Even I don't think that's funny. Be sure to check out our next episode, part three of our history of the US president, starting off with Herbert Hoover. The man who invented the vacuum cleaner. Let me know what sort of history topics you'd like to see me discuss in future videos and your thoughts on Presidents 16 through 30 in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the future.
Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified when more Brief History of the Past videos go up. And check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. You might find something else that you like.